Hey, welcome to the Collective Online Experience. I am so glad that you tune in today. Whether you are on your way to work at the comfort of your home or actually you are on the way to somewhere, I pray that the message will bless you greatly. I pray that the Word of God will change you from the inside out. So, today I just want you to sit tight, relax and enjoy the Word of God. Happy New Year, Church. We're so happy to be worshipping with you again. I just want to invite you guys to join us in ushering the new year with worship. Let's pray. Dear Lord Jesus, thank you for this time. Thank you for bringing us together once again as your people. I pray that as we worship, we feel your presence and experience you once more. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Jesus 
shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turned his face towards you and give you peace. The Lord bless you. Yeah. 
church, as we come to the first gathering of the year, let us pray. Let us commit this whole year into the hands of God. Let us pray for God to intervene. Let's pray for God's blessing over each and every one of our lives as we've just worshipped God with the song, The Blessing, earlier. Let us all pray together. Father God, we commit each and every one of us into your mighty hand. Father God, we commit our days, we commit our weeks, we commit our months into you. We pray for your blessing over us. Give us wisdom to make every decision. Give every one of us the ability to carry out our work, our duty, not just to get by, but to try for God, to really, really do well in the areas, in the work that you have called us to be. Father God, I pray for our whole church, from the youngest to the eldest, from the young people to the working adults. Father God, I pray for your blessing, that you keep us strong in you, O oh God, that our hearts will always be there, longing to be with you, to serve you, passionate about telling others about Jesus Christ, discipling others in their faith, so that they too can remain firm and steadfast in you. Father God, I pray. Yep, there may still be uncertainties in the days ahead. But Father, we thank you that you're a God that is always certain. You are the God that is the same yesterday, today, and forever. In fact, you're the God that holds our future. God, we pray for your hand to be upon every single one of us. Father God, we pray for your hand to be upon our church, O oh God, in all that we say, in all that we do, O oh God, in all that we aspire to serve you and to make your name known, O oh God. Lord, bless the work of all of our hands so that we can continually use our lives, use our church to preach the gospel to the ends of the earth. Father God, we thank you that we can still be gathered, though not perfect, but in this manner, to can still hear the word of God, that we can still serve you in the best manner we can. But Father, I pray that you use us mightily, mightily in this brand new year. Thank you, Father God, because you're a God who loves us. You're a God who takes care of us. You're a God who gives us the vision and the passion to live our lives for you. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' most precious name we pray. Amen. Amen. One of the most dangerous questions that a woman would ask a man is this. You know, if your mother and I were to fall into a sea and both of us were drowning, who would you say first? Well, for you guys who are Googling for the answer, well, I hope you find the correct answer. And I hope you will never fall into this trap. But anyway, the reason why I mentioned this is because I'm interested in the word first. You know, why, why do we like being first? You know, I believe when you are safe first, it shows that you are more important than whoever that comes next. So the question to men can be rephrased as this. So who is more important, your mother or me? So when we are given attention first, it gives us the sense of importance. You know, we feel important when our friends or family member drop everything that they are doing right there and then and comes to our help whenever we needed help. You know, parents will feel very important if their children or their toddler come over when they are called, even though they are playing with their favourite toys. And especially parents, it is a badge of honour for the parent whom the toddler learned to either call Papa or Mama first. Well, friends, we all love being first. God loves being first too. Well, let me explain that. The Bible says in Proverbs chapter 3 and verse 9, Honour the Lord with your possessions and with the first fruits of all your increase. This proverb says that we should honour God with all our wealth and also from our first fruits. You know, give God the honour with the first fruits from all our increase. First fruit offering in the Old Testament, it, it is an, actually an, an offering of the first agricultural produce of the harvest to God in honour for His blessings towards the harvest. You know, you will find it very common practice in other religions of the ancient Near Eastern cultures. Well, in Malaysia, mid-autumn festivals, Pesagawai, Kaamatan are similar renditions of the same concept. However, while other religions tend to present their offerings to the gods in order to bribe them or to 
prevent them from bringing disaster, the God of the Bible does not demand us to honour Him in the same manner. Instead, He first embraces us with His love even before we honour Him. The Bible says in 1 John 4 verse 19, we love Him because He first loved us. God first loved us by sending His one and only Son, Jesus Christ, to die on a cross for our sins, even though we have yet to know Him. 1 Corinthians 15 verse 20, the Bible says, But now Christ is risen from the dead and has become the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. In fact, Jesus Christ offered His own life as the first fruit. And three days later, He risen from the dead. He pioneered the resurrection of those who believe in Him and those who are asleep and bring them to eternal life with God. Jesus sold His life for our eternity and He gave His all for the sake of humanity. Friends, we can never outgive God nor we repay Him for all that He has done for us. But today we have the chance to honour Him with the blessings that He has given us. Today we can honour Him with the first fruits of our increase, with the first fruit of the finances that He has blessed with. And not only our finances, but also our whole life, our time, our moral conduct, our aspirations, our business endeavours, our parenthood, our purity, our emotion, our future welfare, and many more. Our whole life, which also must include our finances, are owed to Jesus Christ, our Saviour and Master. And that is what makes us different. Let us prepare a good offering to God today. Let us prepare an offering to honour Him and put Him first today. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for this chance to honour you with our finances today. God, we know, Lord Jesus, with our finances, we want to put you first. So that is why we want to offer you our best finances, our best giving today. God, we pray, Lord Jesus, that this giving that we are giving to you today will be a sweet-smelling aroma to you. Father, use our offering for the expansion of your kingdom and for the preaching of the gospel. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Our online services will continue for the first quarter of 2021. That means from January 1st to March 31st, continue to tune in with us at Collective Central on Facebook and YouTube on Sundays at 10 a.m. Friends, we are a creative community, both online and offline. So whether you're looking for some new Zoom buddies or friends for coffee and a meal, please allow us to connect with you today. There's many ways you can do this, you can send us a DM on Instagram or Facebook, WhatsApp us, or even email us. Hi Church, Happy New Year! Welcome back to online service. This is the first Sunday of the year. I trust that you've had a good holiday uh, with your family, celebrating Christmas and crossing into a brand new year. I know it doesn't feel like uh, the normal years you cross into a brand new year. It may not be as happy or, I don't know, maybe some of you, you are happy, but it is the first Sunday of the year. Thank you for being here. Let's, let's just, you know, set this time apart to listen to the Word of God, to align our hearts, to align our spirit to the will of God because ultimately, that's why Jesus died for us to give us purpose and meaning. Is that okay? So, so let, let's pray before we hear the Word of God. Father, we thank you once again for today. Thank you, God, that right at the start, we set this time apart to listen to your word, 
to listen to you, O God. Lord, speak through me. Speak, O God, in such a way that this is not just a good word, but an oracle from God, uh, an instruction from the Lord that will shape the trajectory and the course of our lives in 2021. Father, you have been so good to us. And I pray, God, we only live our lives to honour you and to reflect your goodness. Thank you, God. In Jesus' most precious name we pray. Amen. Amen. So, so uh, wherever you are, um, I'd like you to get your notes, your Bible, your pen ready to write down the Word of God as we study this passage together. Amen. It, it's, it's great. It's, it's great to start the year by listening to the Word of God, by coming to a time of worship. I, I know you are, you know, really stretched, trying to get used to online service and uh, kids running around and everything else. But, but really, just, just, you know, reserve this time uh, for God. Um, yep, so, so while we are still at this, um, still watching online gathering and social distancing is becoming more of a norm now, wearing masks and working from home. But I, I truly believe that uh, deep on the inside of us, all of us are waiting. We are waiting. Uh, and waiting is probably one of the most difficult and painful lessons in life. Remember those days when you were waiting for your exams results? Terrible feeling, isn't it? The two months and three months. And you're kind of like happy, exams are over, but you're waiting for the result. Wait, waiting for your medical checkup report. Uh, not great, even though the doctor says it may be three days, that he will call you back. It's terrible. It, it's, a, it's, a, it's, it's not a nice feeling. Waiting for her to say yes after you propose, maybe just a split few seconds, it could be forever. And for this period, all of us, we are waiting for the vaccine to be rolled out. We are waiting to know when it's our turn and, uh, and for this pandemic to come to an end. Prolonged waiting zaps our energy and kills our mood. In the beginning, we, we do feel like, you know what? Hooray, you know, two weeks working from home, kind of like a break. And then after that, it kind of like got us into this rhythm where we become lazy, uninterested, and lethargic. Waiting drains us of our lives. And it annoys us actually from within. And, and that word is restless. We, we, are, we are restless because you're trying to anticipate something, but you don't really know if the answer is coming. Uh, it squeezes every bit of joy out of our lives. So by now, most of us, if not all of us, would have experienced this stress, this strain in one way or another. But you know what? We, we do not want to just know where we are at. Rather, I want to this morning share this message with you that if you know where you are, it is the best time right now to overcome this. All right? To overcome this. Isaiah chapter 40, verse 31. And there's a contrast here between waiting for a vaccine to be rolled out or for the pandemic to come to an end, waiting for results. It's quite different from waiting upon the Lord. Isaiah chapter 40, verse 31, the Bible says, but those who wait on the Lord, all right, wait on the Lord, shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. So instead of posturing ourselves to wait for results, to wait for a better outcome, why don't we turn all those moments of waiting to become a waiting unto the Lord instead? So, in this brand new year, I want you to be hopeful. In this brand new year, I want you to fix your eyes on Jesus and to consider Him, the message that you heard from me last week. So, we start 2021 by studying Philippians. By studying Philippians. But, but you... You might wonder, why Philippians? Because a lot of joy has been robbed of us and we need to find back that joy in life. So Philippians is this book that I would like us to start to, to get us going. You know why? Because unlike other letters, Paul wrote this prison episode to the church in Philippi 
not really exactly trying to address an issue or a problem that they were facing, but he was writing this um, to appreciate and to show his affection for the Philippian believers who have been supporting him in his ministry. And it is, yes, it is a letter filled with the word joy and rejoicing. And, and it is quite contrary to, to how uh, 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 people around or, or us are feeling because he was writing this from prison, yet, yet it was a letter filled with joy. Why is joy so critical? Because in Nehemiah chapter 8, verse 10, uh, Nehemiah said, For the joy of the Lord is your strength. It is the joy of the Lord that is our strength. You see, there is a big difference between joy and happiness. Happiness is circumstantial and possessional. That means happiness is determined by your surrounding. Happiness is determined by, you know, the, the condition that you're in right? And it is possessional. It depends on what you have. You know, to a lot of people, I'll be happy if I have more. Happiness depends on happenings, but joy depends on Christ. Joy depends on Christ. So, yes, it is true that the book, the, the letter of, to the Ephesians uh, has a theme where joy is so predominant, Okay? so prominent, but the core message of Philippians and the joy that we as believers ought to have is actually not based on these things, but is centered at the portrait of Jesus Christ as a humble servant. All right, we're going to study the four chapters of Philippians right at the beginning of the year, but I want to take you to this core passage first for the book of Philippians in chapter 2, verse 5 to verse 11. It says here, in your relationships with one another, have the same mindset as Christ Jesus, who being in very nature God, did not consider equality with God something to be used to his own advantage. Rather, he made himself nothing by taking the very nature of a servant being made in human likeness. I am not sure if you and I can actually fully fathom that, that God Jesus would make himself nothing, taking the nature of a servant, like a king, taking the nature of a servant made in human likeness, being found in appearance as a man. He humbled himself by becoming obedient to death, even death on a cross. So it's like, it's as if it's not enough that he became human and became a sacrifice for us that point of obedience, at that point of humility, he even chose to willingly be crucified on the cross and probably the most humiliating death human, any human can suffer in all of history. Verse 9, Therefore God exalted him to the highest place and gave him the name that is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth. And every tongue acknowledge that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. This is the centrality of the book of Philippians based on Jesus willingly take on the form of human nature. And because of his humility, therefore, we can experience a joy that comes from Christ. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 2 says, For the joy set before him, he endured the cross. Jesus endured the cross. He made himself nothing. He made himself nothing. He made himself man. Selflessness modeled after Christ. That is the key, the secret to a deep seated joy. Selflessness that is modeled after Christ is the key and the secret to a deep-seated joy, that this joy is not based on your surrounding, your circumstance, your possession, your holiday, your, your, your travel, your whatever it may be, results of your children. No, it is found in the selflessness 
that was originated from Christ in the very first place. I want to read to you today Philippians chapter 1. All right, Philippians chapter 1. If you've got the app and the verses are on the screen, read together with me. Paul and Timothy, servants of Jesus Christ, to all God's holy people in Christ Jesus at Philippi, together with the overseers and deacons, grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I thank my God, verse 3, every time I remember you. In all my prayers for all of you, I always pray with joy because of your partnership in the gospel from the first day until now, being confident of this, that he who began a good work in you will carry it on to completion until the day of Christ Jesus. It is right for me to feel this way about all of you since I have you in my heart. And whether I'm in chains or defending and confirming the gospel, all of you share in God's grace with me. God can testify how I long for all of you with affection of Christ Jesus. And this is my prayer, that your love may abound more and more in knowledge and depth of insight, so that you may be able to discern what is best and may be pure and blameless for the day of Christ, filled with the fruit of righteousness that comes through Jesus Christ to the glory and praise of God. Now, I want you to know, brothers and sisters, that what has happened to me has actually served to advance the gospel. As a result, it's become clear throughout the whole palace guard and to everyone else that I am in chains for Christ. And because of my chains, most of the brothers and sisters have become confident in the Lord and dare all the more to proclaim the gospel without fear. It is true that some preach Christ out of envy and rivalry, but others out of goodwill. The latter do so out of love, knowing that I'm put here for the defense of the gospel. The former preach Christ out of selfish ambition, not sincerely supposing that they can stir up trouble for me while I am in chains. But what does it matter? The important thing is that in every way, whether from false motives or true, Christ is preached. Christ is preached. And because of this, I rejoice. Yes, and I will continue to rejoice for I know that through your prayers and God's provision of the Spirit of Jesus Christ, what has happened to me will turn out for my deliverance. I eagerly expect and hope that I will in no way be ashamed but will have sufficient courage so that now, as always, Christ will be exalted in my body, whether by life or by death. Verse 21, For to me, to live is Christ, to die is gain. If I'm to go on living in the body, this will mean fruitful labour for me. Yet shall I choose? I do not know. I am torn between the two. I desire to depart and be with Christ, which is better by far. But it is more necessary for you that I remain in the body. Convinced of this, I know that I will remain and I will continue with all of you for your progress and joy in the faith, so that through my being with you again, your boasting in Christ Jesus will abound on account of me. This is how Paul writes his letter to the church. Whatever happens, conduct yourselves in a manner worthy of the gospel of Christ. Then whether I come and see you or only hear about you in my absence, I will know that you stand firm in the one spirit, striving together as one for the faith of the gospel, without being frightened in any way by those who oppose you. This is a sign to them that they will be destroyed, but that you will be saved and that by God. For it has been granted to you on behalf of Christ, not only to believe in Him, but also to suffer for Him, since you are going through the same struggle you saw I had, and now hear that I still have. That's the reading of the Word of God, and that's Philippians chapter 1. And, and, and you can tell when Paul write this letter, he, he was happy, he was excited. There's a certain amount of hope that is residing on the inside of him. Why? Because he knows all that he's doing actually birth forth out of Christ. All that he was experiencing and all the longing and looking forward to be with the believers at Philippi was actually something that originated from Christ's work and his life. 
I want to take us to the core of my message today. It says in verse 3, I thank my God every time I remember you. Can, can I say this is my prayer for all of you as well? That I thank my God every time I remember you. In all my prayers for all of you, I always pray with joy because of your partnership in the gospel from the first day until now. Being confident of this, that he who began a good work in you will carry it on to completion until the day of Christ Jesus. So church, I want to thank each and every one of you and with joy for your partnership in the ministry of Collective from the first day till now. From when we first started as young people, as students, some gave all, all gave some, be it your time or your money or your energy. For that, I want to say thank you from the bottom of my heart. Without your faithfulness, we will not be where we are today. I will never be able to fully express this gratitude and words would fail me. But one thing for sure, I want you to know that your reward would be great in heaven. Thank you. Thank you for sowing sacrificially, generously all these years. I, I'm grateful and I pray that you and I can be grateful. You know why? Because gratitude makes the simple magical. That when we are grateful, even the simplest of things can become so, so meaningful. But today, it is not just financial partnership in the faith of the gospel that I want to talk about. I'm also grateful to our partnership in the gospel, in the actual work of winning the loss. That we have rallied and bent together all these years to reach out to our friends and our family and bring them to church, you know, through our production, through our storytelling, Christmases and Easter's and all the celebration we've had, that we've introduced Christ to the people in this city. In the last 19 years, thousands upon thousands have come through the door of our church. Many have been one and disciple. Today, we have grown both in size and in age. And many are still calling this place home. Many. So I want to thank you guys for all your work. However, you know, I, I need to realign all our hearts together again. I want to get all of us in the same page. As a church, as we get older and become more comfortable, we have slowed down a lot. This is the beginning of the year and I want us to get this right. We're no longer as fervent as we used to be in reaching out to the lost. We are not as all out as before. We, we used to, you know, visit this person, take that person out for a meal and, and, and talk to them. Perhaps work has overtaken our work for the Lord. Perhaps it was family. I, I have to admit that in the beginning, now, now, Aiden is 13 and Alexander is 4. But I have to admit that when, when I first had Aiden, it was challenging. It was difficult to balance so many things. It's like he's not sleeping at night and I have to wake up in the middle of the night and wake up in the morning and still surf and still try to get things going. And it's not just my own personal life, it's my family life, it's my wife and my kids. And then the church. It was overwhelming or to some of us, it could be the other cares of this life, things that we got to take care of. But, but we have journeyed a fair bit as a church. And this year, 2021, I need us to arrest this. I, I, I want us, I demand that we stop this because we cannot keep saying like, like the story in the Bible, that they gave excuses to the Lord. I cannot come to the banquet because I've bought me a field and got me a wife and got myself some bowls. And so I can't be at the feast of the Lord. So too many things happening and, and we, we have somewhat lost that magic of serving Jesus and seeing people safe. So today, whether you're in high schools, you're in colleges or in universities, you're young working adults. You have a family with young kids running around. Praise God for that. You're middle-aged or even if you are retired, 
we cannot stop winning the loss for Jesus Christ. I think it's enough that we got to really decide in our hearts. If I want to serve Jesus, I got to go all out and do a good job not to please men, but to be grateful to the work of Christ on the cross. College students, don't be ashamed of your faith. Tell people of the goodness of Christ in your life if you're in university. Maybe it's not popular, but hey, you know what? Do not be ashamed of Jesus. Well, if you're a young working adult and you're trying to make a name and carve out a future, a career for yourself, don't just do that. There's nothing wrong about doing well in the marketplace, but something is very wrong if you are trying to do well without Christ. Yep, God bless you with a family. And you don't want family to become the God of your life. I want to ask us, as you listen to me today, ask ourselves, can I still and will I still come back and say, God, I want to serve you. I want to serve Jesus because without Christ, people perish. Without Christ, there's no, no hope for salvation. In Matthew chapter 9, verse 37 to 38, then he said to his disciples, the harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. Ask the Lord of the harvest, therefore, to send out workers into his harvest field. You know what? These two were the verses that were like resoundingly loud and clear in my head when I was a teenager responding to the call of God. It was this passage that scares me all the time. I don't know why in those days, conferences that I attend, more often than not, the preachers will will, will rally the people. The harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. And I always feel that burden. I am that worker to be sent. And it says, ask the Lord of the harvest, therefore, to send out workers into His harvest field. Today, I ask the Lord, the Lord of the harvest, to send us out once again as workers into His harvest field. I pray that God will use us. I pray that God will use you. God will use me to be right in the midst of the marketplace, of our colleges, our universities, and our school to be the worker that will bring in the harvest. I pray as you hear this message today, that God will stir your heart to see the urgency of winning our friends and our families to Jesus because a Christless eternity is hopeless. When we started this church 19 years ago, our vision was very simple. We want to be contemporary yet biblical. We want to be relevant yet theologically sound. We want to pioneer a church that is not like, you know, just a church that has to do church. We want our faith to be real. We want to be authentic. We know there will be struggles, there will be challenges. We don't want to run away from that. But still, we want the people around us to know that, hey, you know what? Though you have gone through this, but I see God. I see Jesus being so real in your life. Verse 21, it's beautiful. It encapsulates the entire book of Philippians. Paul says, for to me, to live is Christ and to die is gain. To live is Christ. So that no matter what you do, no matter where you are, everything that is about us is spiritual. You and I, we are a spiritual being. Whether you're at home or at work, whether you're in church or on the road, whether you're traveling, you're on holidays, or you're busy in a meeting, every moment that we are alive is Christ. Amen. You're at home having a meal with your family, it's Christ. You're sleeping at night, it's Christ. You wake up in the morning, it's Christ. So whether, whether you know, you don't know, you're watching, you're not watching, or you're realizing, you're not realizing, every moment 
in our lives while we are alive is Christ. So, so we cannot say, can I don't serve this year? Can I don't do this this year? Can I don't do that? Can I don't be involved in this? Really, maybe the actual work you can take a break from, but you can't stop living for Christ because that would be who we are. You know, this, this revelation to live is Christ is, was really something that my, my late father has deposited into my life. My, my dad uh, was a man of very few words. When I say few words, very, very few. He hardly talked much, but you can tell from his life, even when we were young, he has his faith in Jesus Christ. But he's different. He wants us to discover God. He, he never forces us. He never, he never forces us to, to read the Bible, to memorize the scripture. He, he wanted us to discover Christ for ourselves. My father would read the Bible, would write notes and understand the scripture. I, I remember I was so rebellious. I was rebellious every step of my growing up in my teenage years. And, and then I came to this point in my life that I need to choose the path that I will take for my future, to be a lawyer or to be a pastor. And I was given the opportunity to be in England for a year, to serve in the church, to hear my call. It was a great privilege. I, I didn't tell anybody. <laughs> I didn't even tell my family, my mom and dad properly. And my mom was really hurt. I left and I went to the UK. So when I was there, my dad wrote me this letter. And uh, that's how my father writes. And he asked me, if this is the decision that you have chosen to make, are you saved? You know, my dad asked me, are you saved? And that to him was the most important thing. Are you safe? I don't want us to come to a place in our church life that we're just doing, fulfilling our spiritual obligation, listen to this online message, take down notes if you feel like it, walk out of this place, but nothing happens. Are you saved? If you are, how should you conduct your life? Can you be saved and not be concerned about your neighbours and your loved ones? Will you not pray for them and lead them to Jesus? I want to thank my dad for his faith. When he passed away two years ago, I had to go and speak. And it was a very difficult time because I knew if I go, I will not see him. So I had this very honest conversation with my dad. And uh, I said, Dad, I really don't know whether I can go. I don't think I'll see you again if I do so. And then he told me, son, do what you have. Because for to me, to live is Christ and to die is gain. You know, in that one year when my dad discovered that there was a growth in his liver, never once he complained. Never once he was angry with God. He said, if it's time for me to return back to my Creator, my Father, I am ready. Do everything. Prepare everything. Not for me, but for your family, for your children, for your brother, for your mom. And that's all I want you to do. And I want to look at this one verse today. It is so beautiful and it is so powerful. I always pray with joy because of your partnership in the Gospel Church, leaders, members. I always pray with joy because of your partnership in the gospel from the first day until now. 
from the first day until now, being confident of this, that He who began a good work in you will carry it on to completion until the day of Christ Jesus. That Jesus who began the good work of saving your life, my life, will carry it on to completion. You know what? Jesus specializes in completion. He will never leave any work undone or half done. The good work that He began within us, taking us from death to life, will surely, surely come to pass. Jesus specializes in completion. Whatever that God has set out to redeem, they shall be redeemed. I want to end my message today by telling you, you know, my dad, being a faithful believer of Jesus Christ, would pray for my brother and I, for my mom. And, uh, and I, I want you to know, my dad has always been a Christian while we were growing up. And uh, I am this rebel guy all my life. Rebel until now. Rebel in everything that I do. Uh, if I don't want to do something, I won't do it. But if I want to do something, I will never stop doing them. And, and so I discovered the joy of following Jesus. And it was so tough for my mom, you know. My mom, like, why are you in church all the time? Like, you know, your exam's coming, you're in church, and, and you even left for the UK without telling us that you are actually uh, trying to hear God's calling. And I, I was stuck. Like, how do I know how to explain to my parents and this is what I'm going through. It was already a turmoil in my life and mom didn't understand and why I was spending so much time. And for many, many years, I prayed for my mom's salvation. You know what? One day, when I was preaching in church, My mom gave her heart to Jesus and she said, I want to be baptized. I said, son, I want to be baptized. I want you to know. <laughs> My joy is complete. All the years of serving God and serving Jesus and it's worth it. And you know what, church? It's a happy thing. I prayed for my mom for so long. When this entire lockdown is over, when we have our first baptism again, and I have the honour and the privilege to baptise my own mother. And I can tell my dad, I've done my job as a son leading mom to eternal life. Church, we have to find back that passion to tell people about Jesus and to disciple them. And that is the truest, truest joy of our lives. Amen. So this year, in 2021, let's realign our hearts. Yep. The past is gone, it's over. The future belongs to us. We have a choice. God is holding us in the future. What are you going to do? What do I want to do? Yep. We can earn more money, we can do better, nothing wrong with that. But we cannot neglect our spiritual duty of leading our loved ones, our friends and our family to Jesus. Amen. This is what a Christ-centered life is all about. Let us pray. Father God, I thank you. Thank you God for our church that in the last 19 years that we have been through and gone through so many things. Yep. We will never come to a place where everything is okay. Nothing can stop us. Nothing should stop us 
from still preaching the gospel and making disciples of every nation. Today, my life has changed because of Jesus. My life is different because of Jesus Christ. It is not my own work. It's not my own brilliance or ability. But it's the work of the saving grace of our Lord Jesus Christ on the cross. So today, if you're watching this alone in a watch party or watching in somebody's house, together with your friends, I'd like you to close your eyes and bow your heads. If you've never ever experienced the joy that comes from within, that originates from Jesus, I want to give you this opportunity to respond to the love of God. And so while all eyes closed and all its bow, even if you are alone watching this, if you've never invited Jesus Christ, into your life to be your Lord and Saviour, to know what it means to have joy that it's birthed off from within, a joy that is not circumstantial or possessional. I'd like you to lift up your hands and invite Jesus Christ into your life to be your Lord and your Saviour. And if you want to realign your life to God, maybe you have drifted away you no longer love and serve Jesus like how you used to. Can I tell you today is not a day of judgment? Today is a day to return back to the Father. I'd like to pray for you as well. You can watch us every week online, but you can also connect with us so that your faith will start to grow. You have a community of believers of faith that walks with you. So you have lifted up your hand and you want to make a comeback to God. Let me pray for you today. Father God, I thank you for all my friends that are watching this, whether in Malaysia or shores beyond. God, touch them as they open their hearts to receive you as Lord and Saviour. God, that you become the Lord of their lives, that they learn to honour and please you and serve you faithfully as long as they live. For those who make a comeback, God, I pray that you love them, you hug them, and tell them that everything is okay. Everything is under control. You're a good father, always, always waiting for us. Thank you, God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. If you say that prayer, um, whether it is the first time you're giving your heart to Jesus and you're making a comeback to God, we have a Zoom link after this was on the screen, you can click on it. We have leaders there. We would love to talk to you and pray with you. Um, and not only that, to help you take the next step in your new relationship with Jesus Christ. If you want to be connected to a CG, uh, feel free to do so. Write to us, email us. Uh, yep, some may be gathering in homes and some may still be on Zoom, but it's okay. Whichever you're most comfortable. Uh, it's not just a feeling. It is a decision and requires action. Is that all right? Start the year right uh, by having Christ in your life. And I assure you, 2021 is going to be so, so much better. God bless you all. Thank you for tuning in. See you next week. Take care now. Bye. See you. I hope you have been uh, blessed and impacted by the message that we've prepared for you today. If in any way that the message is spoken to you and if any prayer requests or needs uh, feel free to talk to us through these platforms that are made available we want to connect with you and journey with you and if you want to be a part of what we're doing uh, through this period you can also give with all this uh, platform made available and be a part of our ministry as we share the message of God's love and hope to the rest of the world thank you now see you
Oh, in you.